Welcome to Advent, the season of watching, wondering, and waiting. The season of Advent gives us a chance to practice these things as a community of faith, watching, wondering, and waiting together as the church. And we need the chance to practice these habits of faith together, don't we? Because they are all too easily lost in the frenzy of holiday buzz and value. Like most years, this year the season of Advent catches us still stuck with Thanksgiving feasts and football. And before you've even had the chance to come and be shaped by Advent worship and Advent scripture readings, you've already had your fill of Christmas commercials, slick ads, and super sales. You see, the world around you right now is trying to shape you into a, a gift buyer, uh, a big spender, a have-it-all-right-now-er, anything but a waiter. But we must not lose these habits of watching and wondering and waiting because these are part of who we are as Advent people of faith. So I want us to think today about waiting and the kind of waiting that Advent invites us to take seriously. What are we waiting for and how? How do we wait? Do you remember what it was like to wait for someone to come to your house before cell phones? Those of the younger generation will have to use your imaginations here, but there was a time when you just didn't know exactly when your company was going to arrive. Such a different situation than the way how many going works in our family now. Maybe you do this too, but in our family, we tend to let each other know to the precise minute when our arrival is planned. And I like to know exactly when people will arrive at my house so I can vacuum the floor one last time or do one last check for new messes. But there was a time <coughs> when, say, Grandma and Grandpa would come to your house for Thanksgiving and they could just say, we'll be there <coughs> on Wednesday. And that was it. They didn't necessarily say when on Wednesday. They didn't necessarily call the day up to say what hour they would arrive. And they certainly didn't call from the road to say, we're 47 minutes away. Or we're turning down your street right now. They just say, they be there. And you wait for them. Can you remember or imagine what that kind of waiting is like? You don't know the hour. Just know they are coming, so you have to watch and be ready at any time and every time. Have you ever waited like that? That's Advent waiting. That's the kind of Advent waiting Jesus is talking about in the Gospel of Matthew when he says, Keep awake, therefore, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. You must be ready for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. Jesus is talking about the time of his second coming and the coming of the end of the age. Jesus talks about various signs of the end, but he concludes by saying, but about that day and hour, no one knows. Nobody knows when the end will come. No one knows when Jesus will return. So be ready at all times. Wait with patience. Wait with hope. But wait with the expectations that the day is coming. Jesus is coming. So watch and be ready at all times and every time. What are we waiting for? And how do we wait? Have you ever had such a terrible night's sleep that you just couldn't wait for morning to come? A night so long and so agonizing, you just wanted it to be over. <coughs> when I was in seminary, I did some training with the Navy chaplains, and I, I had a night like that when I was out in the field. 
<coughs> the first night there, we were instructed by our gunnery sergeant that we would be using no tents and no sleeping bags. We were told to use our ponchos to wrap up in for the night. And that's all. Well, the night was cold. And as the night went on, it got dewy wet. I got wet and freezing, and I had no idea what time it actually was. I drifted in and out of sleep for a while, but then I finally gave up on sleeping and just concentrated on surviving the night without going crazy. And I longed for morning to come, to put an end to the madness. And so through the darkness of night, I waited for some sign of daybreak. <clears throat> Have you ever waited like that? That's Advent waiting. That's the kind of Advent waiting the Apostle Paul talks about in Romans when he says, For salvation is nearer to us now than when we first became believers. The night is far gone, the day is near. Paul's talking about how to live in the light of the hope of Christ's return. For Paul, how believers live is shaped by the expectation of the coming of Jesus. <coughs> live, behave in such a way, says Paul, that it anticipates his coming is near. Don't sleep. The night is far gone and the day is near. So do not live in darkness, but shine with his light. What are we waiting for? And how do we wait? Do you know that song by John Mayer, Waiting on the World to Change? It was popular a number of years ago, but it's one of those songs that doesn't go away because its words are so applicable in all situations, all times. John Mayer wrote those words to talk about the, the longing of his generation to see better times. He's saying, now, we see everything it's going wrong with the world and those who lead it. We just feel like we don't have the means to rise above and lead it. So we keep waiting. Waiting on the world to change. We keep on wait, waiting on the world to change. Now if we had the power to bring our neighbors home from war, they would never miss the Christmas. No more ribbons on the door. So we keep waiting. Waiting on the world to change. Have you ever felt like you were waiting like that? That's, that's Advent waiting. That's the kind of Advent waiting Isaiah is talking about when he writes, For out of Zion shall go forth instructions and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations and shall arbitrate for many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. Isaiah is talking about the time when the Lord will change the world. These words of Isaiah were written in the time when God's people Israel were faced with world-shattering conflict and needed something to hope in. And the hope of God's people that Isaiah proclaimed is in the day the Lord will come, when Zion will be the center of God's reign on earth, and God will be ruler and judge, then all will walk in the way of the Lord, and there will be no need for a war, only peace. What are we waiting for? Waiting for the world to change? Waiting for the long night to be over and morning to come? Waiting for one we love to finally arrive? And how do we wait? Ready? Longing? Hoping? This is Advent, the season of watching, wondering, and waiting. Waiting for Christmas and the celebration of the birth of the Christ child, yes. But more importantly, waiting for the future God has promised. The future the scriptures proclaim. When the world will be changed from chaos, Peace. When the long night of sin and sorrow will be over, and when the Lord whom we love, Jesus, will come again. It's 
a challenge to wait like that, faithfully, expectantly. To do so, we really have to slow down. Yesterday, I was changing the message on the church sign on the front, trying to think of something easy and Advent themed to put up there for a few days. I was standing there watching the cars fly by on Corley Mill Road, and that's what I suddenly thought of. Slow down. Slow down for Advent. It's a message for all the drivers who whiz by every day, many lost in their own frenzy, looking for their own bit of relief. But it can be our message, our Advent goal, too. To slow down, <coughs> to pause, be still, be quiet, pray. During this holy season, slow down and practice these things. 